Hello Cinema Geeks, today we have something different. I'm going to go over DCI resolutions and color depth. A quick overview. Uh, this should be interesting to uh, um, projectionists who want to know the complete path and exactly what's happening on their screen. And also content producers who want to know how to prepare content. I'll probably do a more in-depth um, podcast on that at a later date covering how to make DCPs and how you get to that that get to them from a production side but first of all let's have a look at DCI resolutions now 2k which is DCI is 2048 by 1080 now when we talk about 4k simply double the numbers 4096 double that 2160 which is double this and that's what's used in the 4K version of DCI, which isn't really in real use at, at the moment. Um, Sony do have some 4K projectors, but uh, they're not really, there's no real 4K playback devices for DCI currently in, in, in available or you know, some are in development at the time, but that's still a long way off. Now, if we have a look at this frame here, uh, and we can see it's the uh, outside diameter is the full DMD or full 2K DLP chip. Now we've got two um, types of content that are displayed in DCI and usually in typical film. One's called scope which is 2.39 to 1. The other one's called wide or flat or known as uh, known close to be 16 by 9 it's a little bit different and that's 1.85 to 1 and the good old what we know and always do in HD is 1920 by 1080 now <coughs> the interesting thing here is that um, scope Ali uses the full width but Ali uses 858 pixels height so usually when you're making a scope master you really actually have to render out to this size image uh, and that that is then compressed into JPEG 2000 with XYZ color space and that's what goes into your DCP so if you're aiming for making a scope picture know that really the only the amount of image that gets to the screen is only this much and when we go to wide to wide or flat we're 1998 by 1080 which is as you can see here um, this green one here represents so you've got a, a little bit of um, black on the sides or wasted image on the sides when you're using wide compared compared to when you're using scope and as you know when using scope you're you're getting like a letter boxing here usually when that goes to screen you set the uh, the red area here to um, sit in the middle of the screen and you mask out the rest of course with uh, your digital masking and masking etc now the interesting thing here is a lot of people produce content with their HD if you're doing just a typical HD low cost uh, production usually come out to a 1920 by 1080 and what you would normally do is do a very small resize or uh, up from here to here and drop off a little bit on the top and the bottom uh, as you can see here that little bit here is what uh, is lost from the 1920 here to the 1998 here so basically you're squeezing this image in the middle up to this slight image here of course you'd lose a little bit on, on the top and the bottom but that's all that really happens when you're going from a HD master to a DCI dist distribution master now the most interesting thing to notice, notice here is that anamorphic no not supported in DCI so just so we know what anamorphic is, is uh, you have a square uh, squeezed picture um, commonly used in widescreen on, on film and it goes to an anamorphic lens which stretches that image out not supported in DCI. Why? Um, there's probably a lot of reasons. Uh, well, I'm going to do a podcast a little later which covers lenses and that probably in my opinion uh, shows you why uh, anamorphic is not suited for DCI. Um, the lenses required for you know use in DCI projectors don't lend themselves uh, cost effectively to um, DCI projectors, and it's much easier to deal with non-anamorphic square and just square pixels. 
So that's generally what you're aiming for for DCI resolutions. Of course, if when this all goes to 4K one day, simply just double the numbers as we did here and you'll get basically what you need to produce for the 4K type res resolution masters. But that's a way, lots a bit away. Um, and I just like to say this is because um, as a projectionist or someone involved with projection, you really need to know what's going onto the screen, where it's placed, and exactly when you do anything, when you're doing anything in terms of adjusting the screen, you need to know the sort of picture you've got and what's likely happening to it on the screen, so you can understand any drop in quality, or or if you see a problem on the screen, you've got a better chance of figuring out why, and probably fixing the problem. Now, color depth, bit, bit depth, as it's called, color depth. This is a bit of a black art area of um, of this, and this is the main reason, in my opinion, why JPEG 2000 is used. But we'll discuss that first. Let's go over what color depth means. Um, typical uh, color depth of most distribution formats, like H.264, MPEG, MPEG2, everything is an 8-bit color depth. Um, which means 256 levels per channel or gradient of 256 so with 256 colors you can still see banding in some situations especially in very gradient skies and other bits and pieces uh, this is an example this has only got 16 colors of course to do 16 colors from black to white you can easily see the banding you can't really see it here in 256 but it is possible um, and that's why you know to be comparative to film we need to pump up the color depth now 10 bit of color depth would equate to 1024 or four times the the amount of uh of color uh between black and and white in for example on this level this accounts for each channel red green and blue but we're just looking here at black and white um so if you went to that uh, not really really that's probably a fine for distribution formats now, 12 bits usually used um, because if you're going, although DCI does do 12 bit, 12 bits more to do with the production, where you're using or you're taking a picture in production, and it, you might want to grade it and move the visible color up and down the wheel to make certain things come out more than others. 10 bit should be enough, but a little bit overboard, and 12 bit is what we're using with that. But, you know, whatever, whatever you like. In my opinion, 10 bit would have been enough. Um, now the reason why um, we that you know JPEG 2000 really need to be needed to be implemented at the time is the only codex available when DCI was coming out in standards was MPEG2 sort of H264 and they're only 8-bit color and they also have a, a funny color space here which I might do in a different broadcast and also those codecs were only available at, at these limited resolutions. H264 has some new profiles which have allows for basically everything you could possibly want uh, f for DCI in a, in a temporal based compression um, and it's probably going to do some interesting stuff in the future. The main thing that, that uh, the JPEG 2000 implementation does is apart from being a 12-bit color XYZ color space it's an iframe only type compression and what that means is you can basically do frame accurate type playback out of the um, DCI player. Now that's got advantages but it's also got a lot of disadvantages which I'll again go go into in a later podcast. So uh, JPEG 2000 is good but uh, to tell you the truth especially if we go up to 4K etc um, a temporal based compression is, is I think would really be uh, required there. Might be problems with the, with the frame accurate editing but um, file sizes are getting a little bit out of control uh, for distribution. So that's the, the bit depth and why we chose JPEG 2000. So we've got the better color depth and the pictures were closer to film uh, in terms of what we can see on screen. Anyway, thanks for today and in a later podcast I'll probably go into more detail of advantages and disadvantages of the codex and why JPEG 2000 was used. And also um, what 4K means in terms of if you're interested in post-production side and cameras and, and record and doing the post-production and what you end up on screen with with what you're actually recording on these different post-production cameras out there. Thanks for listening. Bye.